Hello, I am here today to talk to you about living in the world of hearing. In February 8th, I was born in 1997 with fully functional hearing. Seven months later, I was exposed to my first cold, which resulted in giving me extremely high fevers. After numerous trips to the hospital, the doctors called my parents and told them to get me to the hospital immediately. When my parents were getting me ready to go to the hospital, I was already having a seizure and in a lethargic state. Upon arrival at the hospital, the doctor did a spinal tap on me to only find that it was the color of milk, which means it tested positive with pneumococcal bacterial meningitis. The doctors told my parents that if they hadn't brought me in that night, I would have only had about eight to 12 hours left to live. After a few weeks of treatment, I was finally released to go home. And a few days later, my parents noticed I was unresponsive to any sound. My dad would always come home and sneak in the house and he would say, Michael, daddy's home. And I would smile and call to him and this time there was no response. On November 3rd, the doctors have diagnosed me with severe to profound hearing loss. And it would be questionable if I'd ever hear again. My parents wanted me to be able to learn to listen and to be able to learn. At my first hearing aid, pair of hearing aids at the age of nine and a half months old. And after further testing, we found out that I'm completely deaf in my right ear. So the question would be now, what kind of sign language do I need to learn? There's two options that we found. Either American Sign Language, which is reverse English, so it would be to school we go, or signing exact English, which is we are going to school. And my parents made it a priority that I would have an interpreter that would do signing exact English only. In first grade, I received my first interpreter that did signing Zach English. She would be with me for all 12 years of school. She was my advocate in school, and she helped me learn with my vocab and helped me produce my speech. We went through a lot of training, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon every day. In first grade, my reading level started at zero. By the fifth grade, I was in the top 50%. After a while in grade school, I was beginning to fit well academically, but socially not so much. So what we did was make sure that communication with the teachers and students would be the next step in our progress. So what Mrs. Birch did was she would pull up a video and show it to the teachers and students and show the levels of what I can hear. And after seeing that, everybody truly realized how bad my hearing was and more people started taking an, an effort to communicate with me. But that was not my only struggle growing up. I had no friends. I, I was bullied constantly by older kids, and the only people I could hang out with in grade school were my parents, Mrs. Birch, my brother, and some neighborhood friends that would want to hang out with me. One time in fourth grade, I was walking down the hallway with Mrs. Birch, and I looked up to her, and I said, I'm not like the other kids, am I? And she said, no, you're not. But you can be anything you want, and we're going to do this together. I took that news pretty hard. But from that point forward, that's when I began to accept who I am and my disability. As we go into middle school, I became more involved with sports. I was a three-sport athlete in football, basketball, and track. My teammates soon began to realize that Hey, just because he's deaf, he didn't mean he couldn't do the things I could do. My teammates started accepting me as a friend and as a teammate as well. One of my best memories of making a friend was in seventh grade during a science class where we had to pick a partner. And people were still hesitant about being my partner because I'm deaf and I think they were scared to try to communicate with me or just scared of not how to be around me. And one of my football teammates raised his hand and says, I want to be partnered with Michael Buster. And I looked at Mrs. Birch, smiled, and she, she had to go outside in the hallway and take a moment. This, this would be my first true partner that I've ever had, my first friend. After a while, more friends started to come along quickly. As we go into high school, I was feeling good. I had good friends, good people around me, and I was very excited for football. I was also becoming more of an advocate for myself. The need of Mrs. Birch was starting to back off, 
and she would, she would begin just to only help me fill in my notes uh, through signing and um, reading lips. So I, be, being an advocate for myself, I had full responsibilities on making sure that I had to go, I told the teacher where I needed to go sit, how to communicate with me, and making sure that they look at me while they talk. As I approached my senior year, I became more serious in academics and athletics. I wanted to go to college, so I knew that I had to work harder than I ever had before in order to get a good scholarship for academics and athletics. I finished 17th out of 171 students in my class, one of the brightest classes to ever go through my high school. I made National Honor Society and Honor Roll, and I finished my senior year with a 4.1 GPA. I was also an All-State football player. And then I was also asked to be a Red Ribbon uh, speaker, which is to advocate against bullying and to stand up for yourself and show that you do belong with the others. You're not, you're not obsolete from the others. This, to me, showed that I had an impact on the community and the ability to inspire everyone. Later on my senior year, I signed my letter of intent to University of Mary to play football and study uh, biology. To be honest, going to University of May, I was very, very nervous. I was all by myself. I had no friends up here, no family, all new people and new culture. And the reason I was nervous was because I was afraid I was going to have to go through that entire process of making a friend again. That I would have to, you know, I was afraid I was going to be shy about my hearing or that they weren't going to accept me because of my hearing. But it barely took a day. I made my first friend, and I learned that from the past is to be open and be myself around others. And instead of letting my hearing take over, I just let myself take over. As we move on to the education, I decided not to have an interpreter for here at University of Mary. I felt like I needed to take full responsibility for everything regarding my schooling. So after doing some research with my mom, we found that University of Mary offered a closed captioning system. It required that the professor would wear a microphone and I'd have a uh, receiver that plugs into my laptop that sends the data to the people that hear the professor's words. This is very essential to me because without the closed captioning device system, my notes would have a lot of blanks in them. Because when I write my notes, I put my head down, I immediately cannot hear the teacher. I lose what they say and I lose track of what they're saying. And it fills in the blanks for me. As we move on from education, we go into sports. Sports was a way of life for me. And the sport that had the most impact on me was football. It showed me, it taught me a lot of who I am today and it showed that there's a lot of ups and downs in life and how to get through them. And the main thing is it, accept, it helped me accept who I am, my disability. This is where I had people doubt me the most. I had parents come up to me and say, oh, you can't play football. You have a hearing aid in your, in your ear. It's going to fall out. Or you can't hear anything at all. I've also had parents say, you're never going to make it to the next level because coaches are not going to trust your hearing. And I've also had student uh, players come up to me and say, and mock my hearing and taunt me. I use all this emotion to motivate me to become a better version of myself, a good teammate, a good friend, a good student, a good partner, and a good son to my parents. And because of that, football helped me learn to love my life I have today. So how does one that is deaf play the game of football? Well, I have to work extra hard in order to, to react on time with the play. I play with my eyes, not my ears. And I make sure that all communication is clear between the coaches and the players. And also, when I play, I have to wear a sweatband in order to keep the hearing aid um, functioning properly. One thing I've been really blessed with here at University of Mary is that I have had great teammates and great classmates. They all understand how my hearing works and how I function and how I communicate with them. 
And because of that, it made my transition from high school to college much, much easier. Um, my differences from most people, I guess student today, is how I mainly get up in the morning and how I prepare myself for the day. After I wake up to an alarm system that shakes my bed, and I have um, to make sure I have fresh hearing aid batteries, fresh hearing aid filters, and make sure my closed captioning system is all ready to go for the class. And I also have full responsibility on making sure communication is clear between me and the person I will be talking. I do go through daily difficulties um, on a basis, daily basis is every morning I have, every evening I have to set up my alarm system and make sure it works. Because the last thing I want to do is upset a coach or a teacher by being late. And I deal with my hearing aid not working properly. I make, you know, I either water gets in the tube and I, it won't transmit the, the sound to my ear or I have to deal with the crackling sound because sweat got inside the hearing aid. And the main thing I have to deal with is people still teasing me to this day. Yes, I laugh at them sometimes as a joke, but if it becomes a repeated habit, I'll stand up for myself and tell them to please stop. But on the opposite side of that, I have many, many people asking me, how did your hearing aid work? How, do you, how are you able to function and talk so well? And to me, it's very inspiring that people are willing to ask these questions. And I'm a very open person, and I want people to know that having a disability doesn't make you any less important than the other people around you. When I think about my progress I've made throughout my life, I can't help to thank my parents, my grandparents, my entire family for believing and standing up for me. They've helped me push pushed me beyond the norm of being the best student, athlete, friend, and person I can be. And even before I could, my parents decided that I would not live in the world of silence, but to fight to make sure that I could function in the hearing world. Each day, my routine is different from those with normal hearing. My communication style is still verbal. However, my listening and hearing style will always be different. I will always continue to stay driven and passionate about my goals, and the saying that my dad and grandpa always say to me is, live life to the fullest. To me, it shows that, it tells me that life is too short not to enjoy the positive in life. And I never, ever let anyone tell me that I can't follow my dreams. Because here I am, living my dream, playing college football, studying to become a doctor, being a leader, and living and thriving in the hearing world. I'm very proud of who I am. Thank you, and good night.